Hi, Ron Legrand here. Before we get started with the podcast, I thought you might want to know that I recently recorded a 90-minute online training about how we make so much money today in the terms business. That's on pretty houses and pretty neighborhoods, not the junk houses that we have to go rehab or wholesale. I go through step by step on exactly what I and thousands of my students are doing right now to make the fastest and the easiest money in real estate without using your money or credit. If you're interested in doing just that, go to thementorpodcast.com forward slash free training. See you there. Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron Legrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another issue of the Mentor Podcast. I have a very special guest today who's going to help you get into the world of sellers who are upcoming tax issues. His name is Jason Palliser. He's here to give you a unique technique that you probably have not heard about before and help you with your marketing along that line. Is that correct, Jason? Yeah, 100% correct. Um, in the tax, um, I put together off-market blueprints. I'm actually in Vegas right now doing it for a hedge fund level client to suffocate cities. And out of those 30 techniques, delinquent tax is by far my favorite. Okay. So what does that mean to us as real estate investors? Okay, so um, you know, like the hedge fund level blueprints and then the tax, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for a long time, I've been speaking training and um, lots of people have soft uh, software. I sold a software company uh, four or five years ago called REI Black Book. So I'm into marketing systems process. And in the course of doing that, some some larger level uh, clients started reaching out saying, hey, we need to average 20, 30, 40, 50 homes a month. Can you help us with our marketing? We heard you can suffocate a city 30 plus ways. So for the last 16 years, I get hired and I'm here in Vegas right now to work with clients that need a thousand homes in 60 months. So they need to close a lot of deals. So I put together their off market, what we call two day blueprint to do that. Right. And, um, but having said that, uh, out of all those 30 different techniques, uh, we have techniques for free direct mail. We have techniques on how to get on the first page of Google, which are very good leads. But my favorite lead source and why, why we're here to talk about it today um, is that uh, it's delinquent tax, without a doubt. So delinquent tax is my favorite sandbox to play in out of any sandbox that you can play in to, to grab good off-market leads where homeowners raise their hand. Mm-hmm. Or homeowners yeah. raise their hand and say, hey, I have an issue. Maybe you can be a solution for me, right? So, so, so why, are they, why are they your favorite? Here's why they're my favorite. I always tell everybody the same thing. What kind of houses march towards tax sale? And I always tell everybody, let's just say it's Jason and Ron Bank with a $300,000 lien against the house. Mm-hmm. And we find out that that person is severely behind on their property taxes and they're marching towards tax sale. So. Jason and Ron Bank don't want, we're not in the business to lose 300 grand. And um, so all states put laws in place to get their tax money. So they get their property tax no matter what, come hell or high water. So they yeah. put all these rules in place to take take properties back. So all of all of those particular rules have measures in place that supersede our Jason and Ron's first mortgage. So yeah. Jason and Ron Bank would foreclose on that property before it ever got to tax sale because we're not going to lose 300 grand. So by process of elimination, the houses that are marching towards tax sale are typically free and clear of big mortgages and loans. So I always tell everybody, if you're going to place your efforts somewhere in 30 different sandboxes to, to grab off market properties, why would you not focus some efforts on ones where, by and large, you're attacking houses that are typically free and clear of mortgages, minus some fines, liens, and judgments, and maybe some um, um, delinquent tax, right? So It's my favorite sandbox to play in because when there's that much equity, you can strike a deal anyway. All the creative ways that you teach and and, right. So that's more. Plus, I would guess that if they're delinquent and head for a sale, they got financial issues or they would have already paid the taxes. So uh, they've always been good targets. So you've got a cool way to reach these folks, and I can't wait to hear this because I want them too. (laughs) Hey, hey, no, no problem. So. Right. So yes, yeah, so 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 here's how here's how 
this kind of solidified in my favorite technique and we'll start kind of peeling back the onion a little bit here. So the, the reason is, is that doing it for these larger clients, like I'm here in Vegas right now, when we're done, I'm going to finish up my day with them, have one more tomorrow and I'm out of here. Right. So they, they put me in charge of their team, their budgets. I train their acquisitions teams, get everything set up, but I'm in charge of deploying their capital, whatever budget that they have in place and get to test everything. So for anybody listening here, imagine a world where over a seven-year period, I've used other people's large budgets and, and institutional money um, to help them hit their numbers and get to test everything. So I've tested in 100 plus cities over a seven-year period, 100 plus variations of some of the stuff that I'm going to say to you now. And I simply mm-hmm. collect the data. I'm no smarter than anybody else. I just, yeah. I just pay attention, right? So yeah. most investors do it this way. Um, they grab a delinquent tax list and they say, okay, they're behind on taxes. They may be motivated and they've been taught, hey, postcards, letters, be consistent. Hey, we're sophisticated. Let's do a text message blast. And all the, those things you should do, right? Th- those are things that you should do. But what most people do is all the same stuff. They send out letters and say, hey, uh, notice you're behind on your property taxes. Uh, before you lose your house to tax sale, we'd like to talk to you about making an offer and putting cash in your pocket. So th- the problem with that is, as you already know, is that there's a hundred plus people doing the same thing to those same people. So they're all getting the same variation of that letter or postcard or whatever. So what we did over time and tested it out and then kind of came to its final resting place after testing at nauseum is this. We built out a tax assistance program. Okay. So what we did was say, Hey, you know what? We're cause, cause when we're attacking the market 30 plus ways and one of them being tax delinquent, the feedback I got from all these different teams is that, Hey, yeah, we're getting, we're getting some people raising their hand and, and uh, calling us back off of our postcards and letters, but they're saying, go ahead. I have a hundred of these letters. Go ahead and make your cash offer just like everybody else is. And so that's, that's a, that's a tougher road to go down for an investor. Yeah. And that's what everybody does. So what we did was say, Hey, okay, well, how can we be different? So what we did is we started testing multiple uh, multiple markets at the same time, multiple variations of some sort of way to assist those um, delinquent tax homeowners. And so what we settled in on is um, marketing to them uh, in a manner that gets them to call us versus the competition that's 100 plus that are 100 plus deep that are doing it the same way. So what we do, and I'm going to go off the top of my head, so um, it's certainly not verbatim, but it's close. So what we do is we grab that list of delinquent tax, uh, delinquent tax properties in any given county, and we send them a letter that says, hey, Mr. John Smith at 123 Candy Lane, hey, we notice you're behind on your property taxes. At our organization, we try and help pool funds together to help pay some of those back taxes for property owners that may qualify for assistance. All requests are served on a first come, first served basis, and uh, our organization will only help one person per property owned per per state, meaning you can't have more than two properties. We can only assist you on one. Why do we do that from a marketing standpoint? Is because most of the people that receive that letter only have one house and they're like, well, shoot, I think I already think I qualify. And mm-hmm. um, so in the letter, it states, call us at, visit us, visit us at or email us at, and uh, and we'll see what we can do to help you. And uh, when you do, please reference tax assistance code TAC 424001. Now that's a very sophisticated tax assistance code because it's one internal to our organization. There's no tax code that says yeah. that we have to help any human being yeah. on earth, right? I figure, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So um, it also states in there, before the release of any assistance funds, that we reserve the right for the homeowner to show proof of homeownership and we pay all any, any and all assistance that we make, if any, um, directly to the county and you're entitled to a copy of the receipt. Sincerely, eligibility department. And so- Here's what we found out when we do that. And, and again, we've settled in on a variation of that letter and we've built out on the back end. And the key to the success here is how, how we handle it on the back end, right? So what we do, it, what we found out was this. And when I say this and, and um, who's ever ears that this uh, graces, I think in the moment you'll know it without even doing it yet. Do you know what happens when somebody calls because for the first time ever, they actually received a letter saying, hey, let us just see if we can give you some sort of assistance based upon your situation. So what happens is, is they call and say, hey, I'm calling about 
um, your tax assistance letter, tax assistance code TAC 424001. We say, hey, we're going to ask you about your financial situation. We are going to ask you about the house. Is it freestanding and in great shape, ready to fall over and need minor repairs? And based upon that stuff, we'll see what we can do to help you. And here's what we found. They don't call, they don't call anymore and say, oh, go ahead and make your offer. I already got 50 of these letters. So uh, one, they called us, not our competition, which is a victory. Two, they're not saying, go ahead and make your offer. They call and they start spilling their guts. They tell us how much they make, what they, what they owe per month out in bills. What, when we ask them, hey, tell us about the house, they're so motivated that Ron, they, they tell us, they're, they're like, I go, what needs to be fixed on the house? They're like, it needs four windows, updated one bathroom, and one shrub on the left side of the house is dead, and, and, and that's all it needs. And we ask them what their favorite color is. They go, purple. They want to they wanna know if, if we can help them so bad. And here's the fun part. Now that they've spilled their guts, we, we know what the real situation is, and we can craft, as you know, we can craft multiple different ways to help them on leads that by and large are free and clear mortgages. So I always say, where are you going to put your, where are you going to put your effort as, as a CEO of your investment business? So that's, that's kind of how we approach it. So then what we do is we tell them, Hey, give us 48 hours and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. So what we do on the back end is we throw them into a few different buckets. And, uh, so one is, uh, we'll, we'll issue, if they can show proof that within 30 days they can pay their back taxes, we'll issue them a tax voucher. So we will email them a tax voucher from our company stating that, hey, we'll give you $100 towards your back taxes. Now, Ron, you know as well as I do, if they're behind five grand in taxes, and we'll help them as long as they can show the ability to help themselves, and we'll help them with a portion of their back taxes, $100 typically isn't going to be enough to get them out of that situation. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. So, so what we do is we tell them, hey, is anybody else trying to help you at all? Is anybody else offered a penny? Um, because your your house is going to tax sale, an investor is going to take it from you and steal it, steal your house from you at tax sale. Never call you, never say thank you, never give you a Starbucks gift card. We're simply trying to help. So that's step one. Step two, we tell them, hey, we'll have to talk to our office. Um, it may be an option that we can explore. If you're if you're open to it and and we we think it's a good fit and it's and it's um and we can come to an agreement, we may pay off all of your back taxes. And we will we will do a tax loan for you that needs to be paid back in six months. Here's the re, here's the return that we would look for so that we've officially stopped your tax sale. And if for some reason you can't perform, um, what we do is we come out and we do a survey of the house because we don't we don't want to put money on a house that's fallen down and um, that's completely ready to fall down, which they understand that. And um, and and then we would also agree on a price. If you can't correct the situation, we agree on a sales price. So we put them in a tax voucher then a um, potentially tax loan situation where we put a lien on title that needs to be paid off in a specific amount of time. And then all the way down to if everything's too far gone. And sometimes we make that, we, we tell them that they need to be responsible within a six month time frame for repairing certain things on the house. And then lastly, um, most of the time, what happens when they spill their guts is this. They realize in conversation, when because we, we're the only person that gives them any options whatsoever, Okay. What happens is, is that they, in conversation, they start to talk themselves into, you know what, this house needs so much work, which is the reason why I didn't pay my taxes because I can't even fix my house. And we tell them, it, what we do is we educate them by state and county. We're like, hey, look, you have 82 days left. Like you have 82 days left before an investor. So what we do is we we put ourselves as an advocate for them against the big bad investor who's going to steal it from a tax auction. And we say, mm -hmm. why don't we make you an offer so you don't so you're not left with liens and judgments and nothing to show for it. So you're making them a cash offer? Yeah, we just make them a cash offer. Um, or because they're free and clear, we, say, we tell them to go, hey, um, if you're interested in being the bank, we can wipe away those things and you be the bank and we just, uh, you owner finance the property and you get some cash flow from it. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. we tell them that we'll partner with them on it. We'll come in with the money to fix it. So we sell it retail, you get money and you simply don't lose the house. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk to them more. Yep, multiple different ways. Yeah, I heard that works. <laughs> yeah, you would know better than anybody else. I, I used to have a boot camp called Multiple Offer Strategies. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, I mean, you would know better than anybody else that yeah. multiple offers create more deals. Well, that's that's creative thinking, actually. Um, I uh, In fact, I have a letter very similar to that where, where I send them and tell them I'll make them a loan to stop foreclosure in case of foreclosure. Mm -hmm. 
And hey, uh, sometimes I don't mind doing it. Yours is even better because you're going to have a first lien on the property that supersedes everything. Correct. Because you're making them, you're definitely making them alone and securing it against the property and closing it with an attorney and all that, right? Yep, you got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all official. We do what we tell them. Hey, we'll go to the title company. We encourage mm-hmm. them to have an attorney review anything that we draw up. Yeah, they they can draw it up themselves, and we just make them feel supremely comfortable. What a great use of an IRA. Jason. Exactly. Yeah, and I assume it's high interest. Uh, yeah, we usually go from twelve to fifteen percent. And you charge points. No, we typically we we typically don't charge them points. And it, but here's why: most of the time, Ron, it doesn't even get to that. They literally, since they've told us everything, and they're not yeah. putting stuff close to their vest, they come to the decision that you know what, I'm probably going to lose it anyways. We better we better figure something. I, I got you. I'd, I'd kind of like to have that. Uh, you know, if I'm going to make them a loan, I want to charge them points. All you do is add it to the loan anyway. Correct. So that's the money you send. But um, um, I assume you're familiar with Hoopa and Respa. Yeah, uh huh. I've been a banker for twenty. Years. Attorney is familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. It's on their residence. It's got to be done right. Correct. Uh, but I like that idea. Well, I like. I like the best thing I like about it is that the multiple ways to buy the house based on their needs. And I assume if you pay them cash, you're going to buy it at a wholesale price. Yes, I am. If they don't like that, then you're going to give them a higher price, but nowhere near retail, and putting up enough down payment to pay their taxes and mm-hmm. do financing. About the Perfect. size of it. Yeah, absolutely. So we we okay. just um, we we explore the options. We we let them. Um, they've already told us everything, so we just let them talk it out with us and see what is the best solution here. And and we always tell them, hey, there's a fourth solution, and uh, and it work. This works really well to get them to understand. Hey, the fourth solution is someone's going to steal it from me at auction. So any one of the four are on the table because one's happening. Yeah, I got it. Well, that's that's a good strategy. So um, you are you providing this service? To people who want it to hire you, um, yeah. So, so people can um, people can talk to us, and and, and uh, they can talk to us about a full two day blueprint that we do, where we build out thirty plus ways to suffocate their city's form, or or just individually the um, tax delinquent blueprint portion, where we have um, the whole approval process, what we do, vouchers, loans, everything, all the scripting, start to finish, all the marketing letters, and all the postcards that we do tax assistance codes, how we tag their door, everything start to finish. So uh, either or. So, well, let me be clear though. You will either do it for them or teach them how to do it for themselves. Yeah. If they want us, yeah. If they want us to do it for them, we'll do it for them as well. And then we just figure out some sort of split. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what do they need to do to find out all the details about this? Um, All they would have to do is just go to the number two day blueprint.com. So the number two day blueprint.com and it's got information and they can set up a phone call with us, discuss their business. And then, um, and then we'll simply just put them in the, um, based upon what they want to do, put them in the correct bucket. So it's pretty okay. simple to do that. Or they can just email me, Jason at go see Jason.com. All right. Well, give me some of the details on this right now. How long are you with them? Uh, I guess it's case by case. Do you, if I wanted you to continually do my mailing for me. And I oh, yeah, it. that's yeah, that's an ongoing at will free. Like all, all we do is uh, help you set it up. And um, like literally we're 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 pretty user friendly. We as long as you want to run it, we'll run it. Right. We have we have the mail houses in place with specially developed envelopes that it then uh-huh. increase the and, and that's the other thing too. Um when I say tax assistance approach, like we're getting we're getting response rates from uh direct mail campaigns. We we had one guy that was above 20%. We had another guy in, in five days that was already at an 8% response rate. It's insane. Response rate meaning they're calling, sellers are calling you. Yeah, they're picking up the phone and calling yeah. you directly, yeah. Any, any idea, an average percentage of deals that come out of those calls? Um, I would tell you that, um, so we track, right? So like I'm here in Vegas right now, and when I put everything together in Presco 30 ways, we track everything. So by and large in the tax sandbox that we're speaking about right now, the tax sandbags. If we talk, we we close one out of every four homeowners that we talk to. It's no it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the Google one, right? The other ones are, are one out of every. You know, some of the other techniques are one out of every seven or eight or nine. But this one by far gets gets us the best closing ratio. Well, that's a darn good closing ratio, I tell you. Yeah. Right now. Um, and uh, do you uh, think that your service is? suitable for beginners, Jason, or should they have some legs under them before they come to you? If they can't close the deal, then it's all for naught anyway, right? 
Correct. So, so in the two day blueprint on day two, we teach negotiations. If you're just doing the tax delinquent approach alone, then I would tell you, uh, I would tell you that you at least need to be doing it for a year or so. You can absolutely do it um, as somebody who's new starting out, but you want to be prepared for all that. We have all the scripting um, in the mm-hmm. for the tax delinquent sandbox, or whatever, all the scripting, what you say and what you do. But I would say have a little bit of legs under you if, if you're just starting out and you strictly want to just run that without doing a full two-day blueprint. All right, you're mailing to everybody who is tax delinquent in the city. I assume you have parameters. Well, like area, for example, you pick your price range in your area and so forth. Because yep. you, I mean, I don't know how many people in any one city are tax delinquent, but it's got to be a chunk of them. Uh, it's here. I just so I just finished a blueprint last weekend, and we pulled up as an example um, back in uh, St. Pete, Tampa, where I live, and we pulled up uh, Pinellas County, and there was fourteen thousand. So I always tell everybody, you don't have a lead generation problem. You have a, how do I execute in, in, in strike a deal problem, right? So, yes. so here's what we do to pare that down, as you just alluded to. Yes. So I always tell everybody this. Um, once you get that list, we want to pare it down so you don't market to 14,000 people right out of the gate. Right. So the very first thing that we do is, and, and I say it to people this way, is this. Um, you want to pare it down by number of years behind on taxes. Yeah. Example, if somebody's one year behind on taxes, Ron, you and I both know, could be an accident, probably not, right? Yeah. But yeah. in the history of mankind, as far as I know, two years behind is never an accident. Right. And in Florida, two years behind means you're in a danger zone. Because Correct. Any sale is going to be that next year. Correct. And in fact, probably a good time to hit them is just before that tax deed sale. Correct. And yep. You can pull up that information, right? Yeah, you can pull up that information. Yep. So you can take that list and Mail to only those that are two years behind. Mail only to a target price range you'd like to work in. Which, yep. incidentally, what um, from your experience with all your clients, are you getting the results from houses uh, at or about uh, medium price, uh, above medium price, or below medium price? Or um, below medium price, obviously, it's a free for all. I've been doing this a long, long time, just like you. It's a free for all. Um, the lower the lower price range houses um, tend to have more issues, and you strike you strike yeah. more deals. But but I but I want everyone to know that medium price houses and high price houses um, those people have real problems and real situations as well. Like one of yeah. our clients in Jacksonville, Florida, he uh, his first campaign he got a he got a doctor who had some unfortunate situations, free and clear house, one point two million. He owes twenty four thousand in back taxes, and he can't pay it. Yeah. That's very common. And people sometimes forget why. You know, there's always asking why, why? I don't understand. Why? I got to know why I can't pay it. Yeah. Well, just think about all the things that can go wrong. I mean, maybe he lost his business. Maybe, maybe uh, he lost his spouse. Uh, you know, maybe he's losing his health. I don't know. These things, big list that long. So I teach my folks, quit asking why. It makes no difference why. I know. <laughs> what and when and quit trying to psychoanalyze everything especially the thinker brains out there that have to have every answer to every question. Uh, you get into this business and you're going to quit asking why real, real quick. Why would yeah. somebody give you their house and walk away? Why? Well, I don't know. Why does somebody let you get 24,000 behind and can't pay it? I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I, uh, and I don't care really. So um, your services, uh, I mean, uh, am I going to be able to afford your services without going to the bank and getting a mortgage on my house or uh, <laughs> Ah, that's wow. hilarious. Um, so the tax delinquent, the tax delinquent, I'm always, I've been straightforward for 20 years. Hey, we can help you. I can help you at a hedge fund level. I can help you suffocate a city, but you get what you pay for. So the tax delinquent, um, just the tax delinquent blueprint portion is two grand, 1997. And, uh, and then a regular two day blueprint is 10 grand. So people pick and choose what they want. Like I just had 22 people last weekend at the regular two-day blueprint. We do their build-out, we teach them negotiations, we give them some help is, afterwards. Is that a live event or a virtual event, Jason? Uh, both, both, so they get to choose. So we had, last weekend, we had 14 people live, all spaced out to be com- compliant. And then we had about another seven or eight people that did it virtually. Mm-hmm. So that's a two-day training event where you go through the whole thing. Yeah, well, we go through 30 different techniques. Like um, like a lot of people schedule that one, just just so anybody that hears this, um, yeah. a lot of people schedule that one because they're like, 
wow, I'm tired of doing the same five techniques and I heard you have 30 and they, they schedule appointments saying, Hey, I really want to know how you, it took you 11 years, Jason. I heard you on a podcast, but how do you unlock doing free direct mail and being everybody's mailbox for free? So we teach them those techniques. So that's not even a part of their budget. Mm. So um, do you actually do the mailing for them? Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we give them the resources. Um, we give them the resources to do it on their own, but if they want us to do the mailing for them, then we just, we we can help them with that if they need it. Yeah. Well, any mail house can do the mailing if they have the list and somebody to do all the work. Right. Correct. And it's one of them in every city. Yeah. Correct. That's the big issue, the big, the most important ingredient here is the list. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And of course, getting it out. Do you knew, do you hit them more than one time? Uh, yeah, we definitely hit them more than one time. Yep. Depending on which niche. So when we do a blueprint, we break down, Hey, so when we go through 30, we say, Hey, uh, we're not just going to teach you 30 different techniques that we've developed over time using uh, institutional money to track all the data. We say, hey, this one here, pay attention because this one's a top four. And this is how often we do this one. Oh, and by the way, this one is a top four as far as getting us deals. And it's also the number two um, resource for the biggest spreads per deal. So we break down on that level. So every motion um, that they make post blueprint, they're doing it with absolute bone crushing clarity on why yeah. they're going to focus their efforts there. Okay. I want to point out again to everybody listening now, the big warning here, a few years ago, they passed a law called HOOPA, um, Home Ownership Protection Act. And it's all about making loans to people that live in their house. And you better make sure that your attorney understands HOOPA and complies with it. Because if you make a loan to somebody and you don't comply with HOOPA, they can literally make you go back into the position when they met you, which means give them all of their money back, which I doubt you'd want to learn the hard way. Uh, right. Not a big deal, just the attorney must understand it and get the documentation right. Uh, frankly, I've been teaching for a long time. To uh, It's a good idea to make people loans to get them out of foreclosures. Loans are plenty of equity. Again, this is even better because I know there's plenty of equity if we're paying yeah. off the taxes for. But what if they got a mortgage on the property and the mortgage hasn't paid off the taxes yet? You can't be in first position then, so correct. you got the taxes. You'd be in second position. Yeah, correct. So then we just so then typically what we do is we just approach it normally like we would we would we would run the numbers and say hey it doesn't make sense for us because we can't be in loan first lien position. So we'll we'll make you cash off on the property or we mm-hmm. or we or we tell them say hey depending on your situation we can start making the payments for you and we turn it into a subject to deal. Yeah. Uh, I get that. So your whole goal is to buy the house anyway, now or later. Yeah. Most, most of them that make this loan are probably not going to be able to handle it. I'd also want to ask my attorney about anything that would make me look like a predatory lender. Yep. So that I don't get accused of that. When And one of those things I remember in Hoopa, and for me to remember something is a big deal. <laughs> I remember that you have to have an application on them and you have to have reason to believe that they can make the payments. So if they have no income and they have no job or anything, in fact, you can use that to say, I can't make you a loan because you have no exactly what we do. I agree. So, you know, I love this plan. So um, tell them again how to reach you. We should have done this beforehand because you're supposed to go through the mentor, the mentor uh, link. But tell them again. Um, Just uh, to the number two day blueprint dot com. It's got information. Mm -hmm. It's got a questionnaire. We'll schedule a call. Or you can just email me, Jason, at gocjason.com, and I'll answer any questions you have. Okay. Now, what are you going to do for my students who call you within the next 24 hours? Um, I'll give them a 10% discount. Hey, there you go, man. All you got to do is you just, huh? have to, you just have to mention the promo code, Ron Smells Terrific. And then, <laughs> then you get 10% discount. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get back doing live events. Our next one's going to be in uh, December. but. I assume you have the schedule on your site, right? Uh, yeah. So when we uh, when we discuss it with them, then we just shoot them an email and say, "Hey, here are the dates." Like our next one, our next one that we're doing our our two day blueprint is in um, on December fifth and sixth. Okay, perfect. Where are you doing it? Um, St. Pete Beach, okay. right near Tampa. Well, a lot of people listen to this. By the time they get it, it's probably long gone. But you got another one coming right behind us. So. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to release the first uh, the first four month schedule within thirty days. All right. Well, I I really like your program. You say December the fifth. I'm looking it up right now, man. 
December 5th and 6th. Come on out. Am I allowed to come? You're allowed to come. Come on out. Where do you live in Florida? Jacksonville. That's Saturday and Sunday, you know. It is Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make you breakfast. Well, I bet we'll be in touch. (laughs) Sounds good. Uh, Any last words for our group that are watching while you're here? Um, Sure. Yeah. So I would tell you this. I probably should rephrase that. Not last words, but anything intelligent you want to tell them. (laughs) Sure. I'll do my best. It's it's, um, debatable. Let's let's put it that way. So um, I'm here in Vegas. I'm serving a client that uh, needs a large number of properties in a short amount of time. And uh, Mm -hmm. so all I would tell you is this. Um, been doing it a long time, just like yourself, Ron. And it's all about data and it's all about execution. So what I would tell everybody here is that once you've, once you've got a list, then you take that list, like you said, mail, um, be consistent with it, hit them multiple different ways because people respond differently to different types of marketing, all the way down to tagging their door to get them to call you. Um, we've tested door tag, stuff like that. So all I would say is just when you do have a valuable lead, hit them multiple different ways because you don't know what they're going to respond to. Like as an example, you send out a direct mail campaign, typically, you know, by and large in industry, it's a half percent to 1%, right? So here's a tip that I would tell everybody, start tagging the door, or pay somebody to tag their door. We, we, we teach, um, we teach uh, our business owners and we, we teach them how to leverage it on day two, but have somebody tag the door of 600 water disconnect leads, if I'm using an yeah. example. Well, you know, there's another way and that's um, the post office is, the, what do we call it? Um, Every door direct. Every door direct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally puts a piece in their mailbox. Yeah. Uh, that'll work because you got to do a whole area with that. And you're doing it actually uh, house specific. So. Yeah. Um, so, so what we do is we put a note on there around that says, call me about your neighbor. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. uh, and it works like a charm. So we teach you how to take field that phone call. So there's a tip for everybody. Yeah. You, you know what happens when somebody gets home and there's a note that says, call me about your neighbor. They call. <laughs> That's right. That's pretty slimy right there, but I love it. <laughs> oh, we just here, here's what we tell them too. I'll teach them. Uh, you know, I'll give them a little, little, little tidbit. All we do is say, "Hey, thanks for calling me back." I put that on two houses. What address, sir? One, two, three, Candy Lane. Now we know what lead it is, and we say, "Look, we talked to we talked to one of your neighbors a couple streets over about a property. They said that your street might be a good street to talk to homeowners about buying their house. So I appreciate you calling me back. I saw your house. I'm interested. Whether you want to sell now or ten years from now, thank you for calling me back. Cool." All right. Well, we are about out of time here, sir. I really appreciate uh, the information you've provided today. And uh, it's exciting to me as well. So um, we will be in touch because I'm cranking up my buying machine. I've got two acquisitionists and we need to get some motivated sellers in the in the loop. And I've been teaching for years. Get people to call you. They're 10 times better than you chasing them because they have. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So, yeah, if you want to come up December 5th and 6th or, or I guess come down from Jacksonville, come on down. I m- might just do that. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, thank you again, Jason. See you guys. All right. Bye-bye. That's all for this edition of the Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.